webinar is appropriately uh, titled Talking Tools. As we have managed to bring to you speakers today who are definitely no less than titans in their own field. We are extremely grateful to have with us today uh, Dr. Paul Kruy, Chen and Managing Director and Corporate Director who is here and who is here. This Just a moment, there is some issue. Let us uh, wait for a while. Uh, uh, so after the Indira's talk, you, 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 we can actually start the program right now, isn't it, madam? Yes, sir. I think uh, instead of wasting time, yes. uh, we should directly start. I would request... Uh, um, Professor Shantanu Rai, to, since he's here, to straight away start the program because Dr. Roy will be in a uh, hurry to leave. So we can have a concluding hi, uh, session later on. Oindila, uh, let us, without wasting time, let us start. Professor Shantanu Rai may start, please. Uh, should we start? Yes, Professor Roy will be starting now. Um, okay. Uh, Pro Professor Roy? Professor Roy? Professor Shantanu Roy? Professor Shantanu Roy? Madam, let us start with the inaugural speech of the Vice Chancellor. Right. Uh, and, sir, uh, uh, BC, sir, if you may please start. Uh, good evening, everybody. Sir, yeah. yeah. Good evening, everybody. And uh, I'm very sorry that we are actually 15 minutes delayed. So we are not going to take much time. But what I want to say that the, as Vendrila is mentioning and also in the flyer, this uh, title identified by the department is really a very interesting one. And this, uh, I'm sure the topic itself is one of the topic why today's pandemic demands the whole thing. So the healthcare management in the post-pandemic environment is one of the most important thing. Now, what I think that the COVID-19 pandemic acts as a transformation catalyst, which accelerating the implementation and adoptions of change in changes in the public health interventions. So a new model of healthcare delivery emerges with more emphasis on preventive measures, remote care, and substantial technological dependence. However, these are just opposed against ongoing technical challenges to meet the surge capacity in the laboratory testing, the fast-tracked implementation of new technologies, the mental health concerns, the ethical concerns on the potential rationing of insufficient resources and the protection of privacy and personal data during times of crisis. So the, there are several aspects which are emerging as most effective in the post COVID-19 era where the healthcare management can play a very important role. Now today, I really want to thank the Dean of the Department of Business Management, Professor Rotan Khashnubish, for spearheading this talkathon along with his team members, Madam Bush, who is instrumental in supporting the whole activity with respect to the Industry Connect. I'm very happy to find out that two eminent personalities are going to join us today. Um, Dr. Alok Roy and Mr. Rupak Bhadro, 
both of them are from two hospitals which played a very important role during the last one year in tackling this pandemic situation. With these few words, wishing a great success for this um, uh, talkathon. I wanted to end my lecture. Thank you. Namaskar. Uh, who is coordinating now, Professor? Since from now, the uh, I shall request uh, Professor uh, Rotun Khashtubish to so say a few words before we move on to uh, Shantanu Roy to introduce our Dr. Olok Roy, our first speaker. Uh, thank you, Professor Bhaisasala uh, Sir. Uh, and uh, Professor Shantanu Roy, are you here? Professor Rai or he is here, but he is here. not Dr. responding. Dr. Is here. Yeah. And the yeah. audience. <clears throat> uh, on behalf of the Department of Business Management, I really welcome you to this webinar seminar. This seminar has been inaugurated by our Vice Chancellor. And at the first part of this thing, I shall briefly present the issue to you out of this, as it was planned, Professor Shantanu Rai will take some clue and will act as the rapporteur of the session on which our respected uh, speakers, two speakers we have, they will make their presentations. I tell you, I am not concentrating on healthcare industry as such. Healthcare industry has three aspects. One, clinical services. Secondly, manufacturing of drugs and medical equipments. And thirdly, the support services. In this presentation, I shall concentrate on a particular aspect or particular part of healthcare industry that is on healthcare services comprising of primary care, secondary care, tertiary and quaternary care. Primary and secondary level care, as we all know, are taken care of without hospitalization. Hospital actually comes in the scenario at the tertiary level when you need higher level of care and that higher level of care is actually presented by the hospitals. So if I start in this way, within the healthcare industry, there is a segment which is called healthcare services. Within that segment, healthcare services, there is a finer part, tertiary care, where this hospitalization part actually appears. I would tell you that the size of the hospital industry in India is increasing at a mind-boggling rate. In 2017, the market of hospital industry had been as big as 4 trillion rupees. I repeat, in 17, it was 4 trillion rupees market. And under the existing scenario event, by 2022, it is expected to increase to 8.6 trillion rupees market. That is compounded annual average rate of growth at this phase is 16 to 17 percent. It is not with respect to the primary care, not with respect to the secondary care, but with respect to the tertiary and above hospital. It is increasing like anything. <coughs> From 4 trillion rupees, the size of the market is now at the level of, I would not be surprised if, the, if in 20, 2021, the size of the market is found to be somewhere near 7 trillion rupees. Because by 2022, it is expected to be a market of 8.66 trillion rupees. So this is where the hospital industry stands. And if it is so, 
that is if it <coughs> expands in this way then from business point of view we should ask a question is the industry in india i mean the hospital industry in india is it the earlier early phase is it at the innovative phase or is it approaching the maturity phase i think signs are there since uh, the size of the indian economy <coughs> since compared to compared to what we have as our indian economy the size of the indian economy the the possibility of expansion of these hospitals and industry is limited by what is there in indian economy possibly we have crossed the early phase of hospital and industry possibly we have crossed the innovative phase possibly we are achieving we are achieving we are trying to achieve we are at the level of achieving the maturity phase at the maturity phase an industry actually concentrates on the the competitors concentrate on certain key products and they try to gain by economy of scale and since the small players are no longer in the market instead of instead of uh increasing the scope of business they focus on a particular share and cash flow this is sine qua non of industry achieving the maturity level hospital industry i understand is achieving this maturity level now if this is so we are at the level of maturity so far as the hospital industry is concerned hello then pandemic has actually changed the scenario the pandemic changed the scenario in a way that <clears throat> you cannot settle for your key products amri cannot now sell only something related to say gastroenterology amri shall have to go for selling something which is related to the pandemic you cannot concentrate on your key products you cannot actually drive out the competitors and it is such a situation where market is over expanding and therefore the quality may be compromised if this is so then the scenario i think from the point of view of <coughs> Uh, business in the pandemic when you are not concentrating on your key products actually you are moving back to a level the early phase when innovation is welcome new products could come in the market and you are trying to increase your market share such a scenario can develop <coughs> <coughs> and it might be difficult to get back your key products the key products on which you were concentrating and therefore i as i understand if the hospital industry is coming at the maturity level and hospitals which are which are existing are concentrating on the key products pandemic has brought a ch challenge to them challenge in the sense that they cannot concentrate on their key products as they cannot concentrate on the key products actually the scenario is wide open where so many challenges will come and the nature of such challenges possibly uh, mr guru and others better know and i would i would leave here to learn from them what challenges they are facing facing at the stage of the pandemic i would stop here just by noting the fact that if you concentrate on the key products at the maturity level pandemic has changed the scenario and how you are facing this particular situation this we would like to know from you with these words i would invite professor santurura are you here yes yes i am but my ah, somehow so somehow or other my my video is would you, my would video you, is would you, would you please take up without wasting time yes sir uh, uh, yes okay. sir.
Good thank evening. You, thank, uh, you, thank you. Good evening and uh, good evening, uh, VC sir, and uh, good evening, Professor Kashnavish, and my dear friends, uh, Rupak and Alok. Uh, um, uh, let me first of all apologize. There is something basically wrong with this Zoom. I have been doing so many um, uh, seminars. Last year, the entire CEO's conclave we did on Google Meet. Uh, which was organized by the School of Business. We never, we, we never had any any glitch, but maybe glitch is from my side. But I don't know. I've never used Zoom. So anyway, that apart. Now let me tell you. Um, I I will start. I'll start from where Professor Kashmish left left off with a with a very humble uh, disagreement with him. Number one is I don't believe that the hospital hospital industry in the caregiving services has reached its uh, maturity far from it i think it is in a in a rapidly growing growth it is in rapid rapidly growth phase and the private the private hospital scenario is bound to grow i'm 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 leaving it to uh, my friends uh, uh, alok and rupak to deliberate further on this but i feel I don't. I don't feel. I'm not feeling. I feel as a part of as a part of the industry. I feel that most of the companies, uh, large companies, in their diversification plans are planning for healthcare, moving into healthcare as a as a uh, uh, greenfield area, as a as an area of uh, phenomenal growth. Because the government healthcare system has completely failed in delivering services to the to the vast to the 1.4 billion people of this country then therefore it is left to the private sector and the private sector will is is planning to is also planning to respond in a very big way i think uh, um, so i i i don't i don't see that the in any 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 signs of maturity in the in the uh, hospital hospital sector the healthcare se healthcare sector specifically the hospitals the entire range of hospital uh, services given by the hospitals, and for this, the, as far as these two gentlemen are concerned, friends, I have known them for a very long time, and I know uh, their deep commitment to for the students who are here. I I think you should learn work commitment from both from both Mr. Rupak Borua and from Doctor uh, uh, Doctor Alok Roy. They are not only work commitment, but they are concerned for the students. They care for the students, and that is their way. They, they deliver to the society. Management traditionally, when we were when we joined industry, when I joined Tata Steel, I was uh, we were given to understand that the 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 objective of management is maximization of profits. Maxim now it is maximization stakeholder value, and the among the stakeholders are is is society, and we all are part of the stakeholders as far as. Uh, uh, Mr. Rupak Borwa and Dr. Alok Roy are concerned. Uh, I will I will first request uh, uh, Mr. Rupak Borwa because Rupak is uh, uh, he is not only the uh, CEO and uh, um, director of the Amri Hospitals. Professor uh, Roy, of, Professor yes. Roy, just uh, excuse me. Um, yes. Dr. Alok Roy is in a uh, little bit of a hurry. He has okay, to okay, leave okay. early. So if you okay, can okay, please call him. Yes. Yes. Sure. 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 I would then I would then uh, go to go to Dr. Alok Roy. Uh, Dr. Alok Roy is, uh, as you all know, is the chairman and managing director of the Medica Hospitals, the entire group of hospitals. So I will I will leave it to you. Over to you, Alok. Dr. Thank Alok you. Roy, please. Yes. Thank you, Professor Roy. Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks uh, to SNU for inviting me. I'm extremely grateful. Here to be with you all, all the students, Vice Chancellor, uh, <coughs> Mr. Kastnobis, and all the staff and faculty of uh, SNU, and all the students. So the reason why I am today here, and my apologies uh, to Rupak that I have to butt in, because I have to leave at 6:55, 7 o'clock. I have got the medical board for somebody very important which I can't miss. So I have to exit at 6:55. Put my thoughts together and be ready for the medical board at seven o'clock. So, uh, friends, uh, what interested me most was that healthcare management in pandemic. So, see, I have given a lot of lectures in management all my life. All I have been talking about is how to manage, and especially in healthcare. This pandemic has taught me only one thing: that 
the management of the world is start from you first the world is divided into simple two parts micro and macro microcosm is you is all of us and macrocosm is the rest of the world the rest of the universe is macrocosm when the disturbance happens in macrocosm that is the world around us then the micro have to get going and how should micro get going is what i am going to share with you in next 5 to 7 minutes and i'll just share my very very personal experience of managing in last uh, uh, one and a half years almost and what difficulty we faced first of all that we never saw this disease coming we did not know anything about it we were not prepared for it we, didn't, we had no education about it there is no management yardstick or clinical yardstick to diagnose it treat it save it and keep our population healthy which is our commitment so the fear is not because if you know there is no fear if you are well prepared exams are just a cake walk but if you are not if you have not studied and you have not prepared and you don't know what is going to come from which book then examination is big fear so the fear is always of duality of something else in our case we didn't know about the disease so entire world was scared so were we the first and foremost how you prepare yourself as an individual this pandemic has taught and i've seen the examples around us from various hospitals from the world from everywhere those who prepared themselves those who settled their mind those who stayed focused and those who decided to take the world in their stride and went aggressive they all succeeded some people stuck to their ground where they were i'll explain everything every word i spoken so far some people stuck to their ground and they never moved they thought they shut their eyes that this pandemic will pass and they did not contribute till the pandemic reached home and burned their houses then they were sucked into it by the circumstances not by the choice and third group of people who never prepared who didn't deal with it went was on their head and they died in the process let's take the example of the worst there are many hospitals when the pandemic came because doctors were so scared that nobody wanted to deal with the disease <coughs> and in this country thousands and thousands of nursing homes were shut down not because facilities were not there not because doctors were not there they were so scared to deal with this they thought they thought very selfishly though they, you belong to the front you belong this world war is biological war i'm not saying who started but we will all have to end it so those soldiers those who decided not to fire a bullet they got shot and got killed number 2 level of people who stood their ground defended their territory they said we will not engage it we will only do non covid work they still stuck to the non covid work they have not contributed in any way to the pandemic they have not dealt with the pandemic they continue doing what they were doing earlier though in <coughs> less number professor khasnov is if you can keep your phone on silent would be very nice because uh, otherwise it's a kind of uh, thank you sir so those middle level who did not engage with them with the pandemic they lost out big time on revenue they lost out on opportunity they lost out on the name and fame which came with the pandemic for those who fought well then there is a first level which myself and upak both of us belong to we went aggressive we went ahead we dealt with the pandemic on a front foot engaged with it completely and we saved multiple lives so now what management lessons are lying here that those who did not engage because they were not mentally prepared 
So the microcosm is not willing to engage with the microcosm. Please remember, microcosm, you is a part of society. You cannot stay isolated. Those who were indecisive, they lost their job, they lost their money. And those who were aggressive, those who were stable in their mind, who decided to face the pandemic, they all won. And won in not the sense of making more money. None of us have made more money. But they won in the sense that they provided the relief and to the comfort those who walked through their doors. That is the purpose of our existence today, to provide comfort. Money will follow eventually. It always follows. Name and money will follow eventually. So these three steps which people took in this pandemic. Now, what happened? When the pandemic hit us, because we didn't know what are the medicines, we didn't know what are the uh, suits, what are the clothes, what are PP required, how to uh, change and treat them, we had to metamorphose our hospitals. We realized so many shortcomings in the hospital, which are good for the regular time, but not for the change time in pandemic. So we all had to overnight change our walls. We had to make it negative pressure because we couldn't throw the corona inside. We had to take an outlet system. So converting negative pressure the entire hospital, we did that because we went and bought uh, the exhaust fan from here, there, we got air conditioning people involved. Once we did everything, we realized that hospital has become very hot because all the cold air is being sucked out. And all this had to be done on feet. Every possible lesson which you have learned in management, that quick thinking on your feet, adding on your facility, changing parameters overnight, it only happens when you become a team player. When you realize the value of everybody who exists in your system. If you give space to everybody to perform. If you value every person who is, so that teamwork as in every management book start talking about. Stay focused, innovate, quick on your feet for change and cultivate the team. All these five things were so visible in our approach in dealing with pandemic. Remember, we couldn't save lives. It's not that we save. We are the highest production of dead bodies nowadays. In every hospital of ours, we produce 15, 20 bodies. We used to have ambulances outside. Now we have herdsmen outside our hospitals, lined up. So that's the situation. We are getting, when we admit one positive patient, remember, there are 20 those who are not diagnosed yet and 30 who are asymptomatic. So 30 plus 20 plus 50 plus 30, every positive patient, you have 80 patients you have missed. So if there are 4 lakh positive cases, which are proved positive cases, multiply by 80, those many corona uh, infected patients are roaming around. Do you get an idea? 4 into 80 comes to 1 crore plus. So that is what you are dealing with today. And in that situation, where it's, it's a, and civil society was most unhelpful. I'm still so sorry to see the responsibility from youngsters. Uh, they're still uh, partying, they're still going without masks. I was uh, on a road last night, I had to go at some place at 11.30 from Park Circus, full of people. No one was wearing masks. You are only making our war difficult for you. But the lesson learned that those who are irresponsible, those who do not follow what society needs will pay a heavier price. So what is most interesting that the fundamental lessons of staying focused, dealing with the problem as it comes to you and aggressively, sometimes the prevention is not stopping the problem. Prevention also lies in taking a step forward and hitting the ball before it hits the ground. That's also prevention. Sometimes it's important that you understand your team and respect them for what they are. Listen to them and be with them. 
Today, there is a no soldier and no general. Everybody is soldier. Pandemic has taught us one thing, that there is no hierarchies. We are here, all, any one of us can lose life. The pandemic will not spare because you are a general or you are a soldier. That means everybody has to be equally prepared. That means every soldier must have access to weapon as everybody else has it. So equitable distribution of resources. I've just added one more parameter for you all to understand. So unless all the resources are equitably dis uh, distributed, you will not. I'll give a small example. When the first pandemic came, uh, we realized there's something known as extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. That's a machine which breathes for you and the biggest damage in COVID is because the patient is not able to hold on to the oxygen, there's a less level of oxygen in the body. Then every organ, because of lack of oxygen, starting from brain to heart and everything, it start dying slowly, slowly, slowly. That's how patient dies. So there is a machine which works as a heart and lung for a patient. We realized in last pandemic that this machine can save lives. Each machine costs close to 60 lakhs. 50 lakhs is cost of the machine and 10 lakhs for the ventilator and circuits and all that. In last year pandemic, the, we decided to have 10 ECMOs. And we did for the large number in the country, 10 ECMOs were running last pandemic. Before this pandemic hit us, we got another 15. And suddenly we realized we are the largest ECMO provider in Asia. Now, there's no dearth of people in this country. But why nobody thought of it? Because none of them want to go aggressive. And it costed me every penny I saved in the last one and a half years. The entire pr uh, process of buying costed me more than 15 crore. 15 crore is a lot of money for any healthcare today in this pandemic. So the, in, the right amount of investment in resources is paramount in saving lives. There's no return on investment made here. What I'm trying to point out for the students that it is important for you to make profit, but it's also important for you to deploy resources when there's no profit also, because here the profit has shifted from currency to the human lives. So the shifting of profit from currency to the human lives is a new uh, parameter, it's a new dimension. So every time, if we go by what my point I'm going to put up to you, that the same uh, uh, surface on which we are operating, or which is known as profit, suddenly got changed to human lives. And that is something which is invaluable. No profit can ever compensate for that. You don't know whose life you're going to put. Today, we have put people who are 29 year old, 30 year old, 35 year old, 40 year old, 50 year old, 60 year old on ECMO. Sometimes we have put somebody as a 19 year old on ECMO. So the, you need to define your bottom lines based on what exigencies you are uh, in at that point of time. So I would conclude my saying here by five things which I want to add on. Stay focused, stay quiet. You need to uh, adjust your mind. You have to stabilize your mind. Your mind, your biggest friend and worst enemy. Second, innovate. Third, don't hesitate. Hesitation in pandemic will kill you. And your internal nature will decide you're going to fight or you're going to flight. So stabilize mind, use the occasion to go in and engage aggressively, build team, be ready to change at a short notice. Whatever happens, if the change has to happen, accept it and move on. And the bottom line is not always standard bottom line. I will conclude by saying that till a few years back, we used to treat patient based on his disease. 
When somebody has got a heart problem, we'll treat him. Somebody has lung problem, we'll treat him. Today, we treat patient by the expectation of the family. One 29-year-old boy brings his father who's 65-year-old and says, do whatever is required. I want my father alive. We all jump on him. We put him on ECMO, this, that, ventilation, save his life and send him home. Same, one more 29 year old brings 65 year old father and says, it's okay, don't disturb him, let him go. We all withdraw our hands and allow him to pass it. So a lot of responsibility have shifted from physician to us, to civil society, to take decisions about our near and dear. Of course, some part of it is decided by the, our fiscal responsibility and capability also. But mostly it is our mindset. So one thing if you want to work on in your life is settle your micro, your mind, and you be at peace with yourself and be stable. Then no pandemic can ever shake you and you will emerge winner. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Roy. Uh, Doctor, can I put one, one small question to you? Do you have time for that? I have time till 6.55, sir. Okay, okay fine. Fine, 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 fine. Uh, I, I think uh, the striking thing that uh, you, you told uh, us today uh, was, was about, especially which is, uh, which is of great significance to the students, is team. They have to learn to be in teams. How, how effective? I mean, you have been a team builder. I know, I know you. And also the need to stay calm. Doctor, let me ask you, do you still have that uh, putting hole in your, in your office? Yes, of that course. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that, that team, I mean, your team, I have seen during, during peace times, non-pandemic times. Uh, but now uh, it's a war-like situation, I'm, I'm sure. How are these, uh, is, there, is there fatigue in your team and how are you leading it? You, are, you always lead it from the front. And so, how important is the role of each member of that team, of your team? And what is the strength of your team now here? I'm talking of Kolkata, not, not the other, other hospitals that you have. I, I have a half an hour session with my team every day. We have six currently hospitals which are running in different locations. And the team, all of us get together in the morning and I give them a talk, not on management. Every day, half an hour, I get them. A, I pick up small pieces from Gita or Upanishads. I tell them how to stay calm. So everybody in our group practices how to stay calm. I said, you are capable people. The problem is that we all are very capable. Because we are not able to manage our anxiety, we make mistakes. Just manage your anxiety. I tell everybody, manage your anxiety. You can't change everything. Like we have a very difficult decision today to save a 57-year-old man or 29-year-old girl. We chose 29-year-old girl. Now, nobody can ask me. I, I, by no court uh, will punish me. My punishment is in my heart and my mind. Why did I choose 29-year-old girl? That question is that, so such decisions only come when you're very calm. You decide about things, such decisions uh, you take. So, so the, my effort with our team is to stay calm. Don't get agitated. What may happen? Don't get agitated. As a result, they all deliver and they're not tired. We have been working day in and day out and they're just not tired. And we take every call, not a single call we miss. And believe me, we, I get personally close to 2,000 calls a day, and I'm not joking. We are, we, I respond to 500 plus WhatsApp a day, and I'm not joking. So you can imagine how many people we're dealing with. But that's the way it is. Stay calm. You can win anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it's calm. Resilience. Resilience. Okay. Resilience. Thank that's you. what Thank you, is. sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. May I ask a question? Yes, please. Hello. What about the business during the pandemic? Has it expanded sir, or declining? Sir, business is expanded. Profit is declining. <laughs> it is expanding. 
business expanded i have got now hmm. but if profit has declined number of, if you got number of beds i have got uh, uh, now we had uh, 400 uh, 14 beds now i have got close to 900 beds in calcutta itself <laughs> it's not doesn't a question but my profit has declined again no sign aha and can you can you concentrate on your key products now can so you concentrate what? on your key key products now all key products are shut all key products are shut yeah uh, that is the scenario i was actually ex- explaining the yeah, key I products know, are shut that. and so you are concentrating key products are only valuable when you are in a peace time that's it that's true yeah you so cannot get back key. Sir, can you get back your key products in post-pandemic scenario? What do you hope? We, they will just walk in. We have experience. Oh, 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 oh. because I, sir, I know, if you need a eye surgery, you are not going to the hospital uh-huh. because uh, you are uh, in. We are in pandemic. The moment pandemic comes, first thing you do is get an eye surgery done. So nobody runs away from the hospital. You can't But run away because you you are inconvenienced. So you, our key would, products are not going anywhere. I understand. Anywhere. I understand. would you get more competition in the post pandemic scenario on your key products sir healthcare is a deficient market we are not competitors we are collaborators my collaborating collaborators we collaborate because we are in deficient market we are in short supply demand is far more can i do, do be, hello sir hello uh, 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 can i can, uh, dr roy can you take a question from a student if a, any any student wants to ask a question because dr roy will right. be going away the q and a session will not be there he will not be there during the q and a session any student wants to ask any question to dr roy one Hello? minute i think vice chancellor wants to ask a question oh. sir you are on mute sir you are on mute um, <laughs> one once one question is in the chat box already if you just have a look at it professor a i can't see i my my audio okay. is, right. video is okay, not okay. there video yes, in yes. a okay. my, i will i will read it out i will read it out this is from onnit das go point should healthcare sector note and need develop for further pandemics how healthcare sector should manage the further waves of covid 19 we have to first of all we have to work on public health public health is a huge issue and uh, which needs to be addressed at this point of time and second thing more investment from center see the healthcare is something which needs a huge investment and traditionally in last 70 years we had a very poor investment government has not strengthened its facilities and government has not really invested as much they should have done in primary health and tier 2 and tier 3 cities so health 80% of good healthcare is restricted to 20% of the metro and big cities so that uh, in equal distribution has to be corrected so two things which are important and i will conclude here by saying this first public health second we need to get into the uh, smaller market these two things are yes. thank you very much nice yes. talking to you all thank you thank rupa you, you must you. forgive me for leaving now thank you all of thank you thank you thank you boss thank, thank you thank you very thank much you, thank you very thank much you. dr roy thank yeah. you dr roy thank you thank yes. you thank uh, you uh, well uh, now i think uh, it's it's my very pleasant duty to ask uh, request uh, mr rupak bodwa uh, a very very dear friend of mine who is also he's wearing two hats actually he is the president of the uh, private uh, hospitals association plus he is the director and um, ceo of the amdi hospitals uh, there are there are as you know there are three hospitals right now here in kolkata plus bhubaneswar and uh, i have known rupak for a very long time and he is he is a manager who not being a medical person has as a man who has turned cmri and uh, billa heart uh, center and uh, is so approachable that uh, you know he, he is another person like dr roy who's Whose, whose phone he always responds to a call he always responds to a whatsapp and he always tries to help so uh, rupak can you just uh, uh, share with us the challenges uh, dr roy has spoken of the challenges uh, at this particular time but you as a from purely from a management point of view for a man, as a as a manager as a leader of teams uh, 
the the you are suddenly faced with this this terrible situation uh, of a second wave and how how this crisis uh, how are you managing this crisis thank you uh, thank you professor roy uh, good evening everyone and uh, it gives me great pleasure and honor to be here and sharing uh, my views with this uh, esteemed audience uh, yes healthcare sector is uh, going through a turmoil that you can uh, we all can see uh, as a nation it is going through and the whole burden because this is uh, the whole uh, the pandemic started that uh, i mean started last year what we started facing as dr roy was also mentioning and uh, and what we taught out of this uh, uh, i mean uh, this pandemic what we learned out of this pandemic and uh, and uh, in the beginning uh, i think uh, the vice chancellor also was talking about the growth and the and the, and the i mean the opportunity of this healthcare just before this pandemic i would just like to share with you little, this little bit of the healthcare sector that is the yes healthcare sector is in very growing sector and uh, it has not yet reached to the uh, peak level still it is going on is in almost uh, 17.6% of the cagr this healthcare sector is going in spite of this huge growth we could uh, we could witness uh, last uh, 10, 15 20 years of money almost that's the same pace it is growing and it is in, i mean the growth rate is very high still so for the opportunity is concerned in terms of the bed strength and there is a huge uh, huge crisis still today in spite of uh, growth of 17.16% you see uh, as of today if you consider the bed infrastructure wise we are having uh, One is to one thousand bed, which as per the World Health Organization, it should be three beds per thousand. As per the and uh, we are quite uh, quite uh, behind of the scenario of this your other developing countries, developed countries. Now, in terms of yes, of course, one part is an there is a uh, infrastructural opportunity we have, and there is a uh, there is a uh, opportunity in terms of business opportunity. because there are many uh, areas opened actually for uh, this uh, healthcare sector now india is expected to rank amongst this is the top 3 healthcare markets in terms of incremental growth by 2020 i am talking about the indian healthcare and if you see that your that uh, financial year 19 2019 indian healthcare sector stood as the fourth largest employer as it employed total of i mean uh, 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 three, three, three and half lakhs, four lakhs uh, employment uh, opportunity we could see in the 2019. So it is the fourth largest employer. So there is a huge opportunity that we can see. Now there are many uh, reasons for growing of this healthcare. There are many reasons uh, because of the, uh, uh, I mean, healthcare sector per se. It is ch change a lot now. There's a demand growth is different. people uh, the rising income is one part and there is a uh, uh, i mean your uh, uh, opportunity in this your international tourism healthcare sector that is one area then the your research and education this is a one area there is a many ways this is growing and the major growing actually in terms of your digital and the technology both uh, this your uh, this is the digital part so for the healthcare sector is concerned and the device part that is also a big area that is the healthcare sector is growing now uh, in spite of everything when this pandemic started we could see that our uh, healthcare sector is very very immature why it has happened see if, the, if we consider the healthcare sector in terms of the bed strength and the population there is a 70% of the bed actually is being dominated by the private sector dr roy also was mentioning because of the public health actually the healthcare is should be supported by the major part is the governments that they should support the healthcare what happened that there's a no uh, i mean major infrastructural issue that we could see particularly in the tier 1 tier 2 places and also in the primary healthcare segment secondary healthcare segment 
20% of the healthcare actually in the city, uh, city bound area and 80% is in the rural area, which is absolutely neglected. There is a huge uh, deficiency of the doctors, nurses, infrastructure. There is not many of private healthcare providers presence in this your tier one, tier two places. Doctors doesn't want to go there. So there is a huge shortfall in terms of, uh, in terms of your infrastructure, in, in terms of your human resources as well. So that place actually had not yet grown and uh, the, all the burden of this your healthcare, I mean the uh, tier one, tier two places to some extent, particularly in the tertiary care. Secondary care, okay, sometimes they're taking care, but the major part is the tertiary care, the, the super specialty care, the whole burden is coming to this your, the city level. And that's why you will find there is a lot of district patients, the rural patients actually build up in the in the private hospitals of Kolkata, I mean, in the city private hospitals. Now, when this pandemic started, you know, that is, a, we, used to, we used to manage healthcare in a different way. More we are looking for quality care, more we are looking for uh, better patient care, we are looking for NABH, we are looking for JCI. Lot of, uh, you know, that we are giving a lot of stress to this your uh, major way in the quality care. Now, when this year pandemic started, actually, we never faced this kind of a scenario. It is an invisible enemy. We are not having any idea. There was not, and as I mentioned earlier also, it, we could understand that's a, how this year healthcare sector is so premature, I mean, a immature kind of a segment. So then uh, the, the, we are not having much of idea about this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, pandemic, the invisible enemy. And we started, you know, understanding how it behaves. We are starting getting, uh, because it's a very new in the, in the worldwide, if you see, it started maybe uh, December, Jan, and uh, it, it, uh, it hit in actually uh, in the month of March, April in uh, India. So uh, that, was it. Uh, that was a huge crisis that we could see. There is an infrastructural crisis. There is a human resource crisis and there is a supply chain crisis. These three areas that we could see apart from the financial crisis. If you see the first quarter, the uh, last year I'm talking about Q1, the April, May, June, this suddenly the, the, the total, uh, you know, that uh, your uh, healthcare, if you see as a combined, your uh, total turnover of healthcare, it just dropped to 30%. And uh, there's a huge, uh, you know, the challenges of the extra additional expenditure because of the, uh, uh, your safety gears, because of the huge uh, human resources requirement. That was a very, very challenging time. This during the first quarter, slowly we started understanding the, what is happening, how we should handle this one. And uh, doctors were also started becoming a little bit comfortable and uh, they have started understanding the behavior of this uh, virus and we could handle the situation in much efficient way in spite of a uh, lot of staffs uh, uh, you got affected and infected and uh, they were out of the circulation so there is an additional manpower we uh, had to hire but you know that again the particularly in uh, bengal there is a huge crisis of the doctors and the nurses apart compared to other states because our production of the nurses is hardly uh, 15 to 17% of the total requirement um, in terms of private care. Whatever their, their production is, more they are going to absorbing in the private, uh, government sector. So we, we are dependent on the more in cases of uh, uh, outside nurses. And that is almost 75 to 80% nurses we are dependent for this year uh, uh, outside, like your Kerala, this is Karnataka, this is Charkhan, Northeast and all. So that was a huge crisis because, and, uh, and the doctors, RMO, yes, of course, there is, a, there is a huge gap so far. Now, as of now, doctors, is a, there is a doctor's uh, shortage is almost 1.6 lakhs of doctor shortage in India there is a six lakh shortage of the nurses uh, already we have. So do, these are the crises, these are the challenges which we had faced. There is no not proper medicine was available at that time. There is a supply chain was crashed like anything because that's a pandemic. 
there is a no uh, transport device available so we had to add it because there is a, if you see there is a uh, in, in uh, kolkata sitting in kolkata there is hardly any production manufacturer here in kolkata because nobody was having much of idea about this copp n95 particularly so then we had started talking to the government then msme then they started uh, uh, manufacturing this kind of a pp kit and uh, and the uh, n95 and all and we could manage the situation during that time also there is a one part that we could get some time you see that the difference between the last year and the this year second surge first surge actually it took some time from it started from end of march and the peak level reached to almost in the month of september so we could get time and slowly we augmented the beds but now if you see the second surge there is a different kind of a challenges the different challenges is that in a short time in a month time actually we reached to almost to the peak though uh, there is a little bit variation of the comments there is a, somebody is saying that we have not yet reached peak maybe it will take another 7 10 days time to reach peak but in one and half months time actually the whole thing happened and there is a not sufficient number of beds why there is no sufficient beds because the last year there is a sudden drop of all the non covid patients general patients because of the lockdown and all those happened and we are not having much of idea about the pandemic but this time we were, we started knowing the pandemic from december onwards january there is a non covid patients started moving many people many uh, uh, senior citizens actually those who are waiting for uh, uh, treating treatment from the doctors or the surgery to be done so they started moving out of their house and uh, they started approaching the hospitals for doing surgery the uh, corrective surgeries and all but suddenly this uh, pandemic i mean the second surge there is a non covid patients are there for surgery and all and there is a huge demand of the covid so overnight changing from non covid to covid it took some time but still we did a lot the whole private healthcare actually converted almost i'm talking about in kolkata almost there is a 5500 beds we have created as a whole and uh, and we are we are uh, serving people this time what we could see there is a huge demand of the critical care beds because uh, most of the uh patients those who are between this your uh, 35 to 45 below 50 they are more requiring is a uh, critical care so getting the uh, because ventilators critical care requires a lot of ventilators um, uh, monitors uh, bipap and all getting this from other states was a big, big crisis so somehow we could uh, get it and uh, then dr roy was mentioning about ecmo there is a huge demand because this is a ultimate treatment of uh, uh, covid patients that also we could get so this way we had handled the pandemic so uh, the i talked about this your the as a whole the healthcare infrastructure what where we stand right now the uh, one part we discuss about the first uh, pandemic how we could manage how we could uh, overcome those challenges and this uh, pandemic which is uh, this second surge actually which is going on that is also one big challenge that we are facing in terms of augmenting beds from non covid to covid and uh, managing uh, the critical care because that is a major crisis is in the critical care area these are the challenges the challenges of uh, shortage of the human resources is still there still we are managing somehow we are managing those uh, human resources and and uh, we are trying to uh, trying to extend all kind of a best possible support to the support to the patients now the question is this are the financial part more on lot of questions were coming up the how you were managing the uh, uh, financial part yes financial part yes there is a demand there is a almost the hospitals are running full uh and full means yes of course in the covid segment non covid segment is still there is a not more than 45 50% of the occupancy we are managing but covid patients actually doesn't give much of uh financial support because that is a definite kind that is a uh, that is an emergency crisis the disaster uh, we have a you know that is emergency and disaster uh, kind of a situation so we'll have to take care of the patient so our charges and all we 
kept as low as possible other than some ECMO patients and all that cost really is very high. But otherwise, general patients and all, we try to keep it in a very reasonable way. And uh, there is a financial crisis, but yes, of course, we are absorbing the, that uh, financial deficit and, uh, and we'll be able to overcome the situation in, in a very short term. So, uh, Professor Rai, that is this much. I now, uh, more I think I would like to, uh, when I mean, if we can ask questions, then I think we'll be more specifically, we'll be able to uh, address the situation. Dr. Borua. Yes, please. I'm, can you, I'm not a doctor can you, can you concentrate on your can you concentrate on your key products now? Uh, what does it mean? What do you exactly want to know? I mean, the uh, products means C your certain key areas mm -hmm. in which there are certain key areas mm -hmm. your in which your hospital has specialized. And you made a lot of investment in that area. This See, I call as the key area. Okay. And yes. I think the occupancy rate there is low now. Yes. And that actually, that gives a scenario where you are, you should face a financial crisis because in that area, the occupancy is low and the revenue that is generated in that area will be rather low as a result of which the total revenue generated in the system could become lowered. Yes. Is that true or? Yes, yes, that's right. You are uh, very true that we had invested a lot in terms yes, of- Yes, you had to. Yeah, in terms of uh, building the infrastructure. So we had built up one, uh, if we are talking about AMRI, we have extended our one of our units in Mukundapur that we have extended additional, that's a state-of-the-art hospital. We had invested a lot in terms of super specialty. Rupak, care. Rupak, um, I finally, I finally got, got my voice and I finally got my video. Can I, can I interrupt? Um, sorry, yes. uh, Professor Khashnavish, I, I interrupted something that I wanted to ask for, for quite some time. The most striking feature that I find in your leadership, Rupak, this is basically yes. about a leadership style, that you never let grass grow under your feet. Yes. I saw in the papers today that you have taken over one part of the Lolit Great Eastern uh, Hotel and, and you are converting it to a COVID facility. Right. And uh, this is for the affluent section. Now, this is something which, which I think the, the, the proactive, or rather the preactive nature of your style has, has always has always kind of not baffled me, but I've earned a lot of respect from my side. I've always seen this, that before it hits you, you won't react, you preact. So this way, I think you have, you have, uh, you tell me what, what, what thought went behind taking over this uh, uh, five-star uh, luxury hotel in central Calcutta. Is it because you never had, you didn't have a facility out there? Is it because uh, of that, uh, yes, that you uh, that you wanted to? Yes, yes Rupa, huh. please. So, uh, Professor, is a very, uh, very uh, interesting question and a very right question in this uh, um, audience, I mean, in, uh, I mean uh, addressing this audience. See, every time, I'm, if you are talking about me or I will say all the, my, uh, uh, I mean, uh, budding managers are there. Uh, they will take over the, um, I mean, the hospitals or whatever. But uh, the industry uh, leaders, everyone should come out. One thing we should learn: every every scenario, every situation, there is an. You will have to see the opportunity. Every scenario. Yes, it's a, it's a pandemic, but there is an opportunity. So never lose that opportunity. That is the whole part. So what we have studied, and you'll have to be very fast in making decision. You cannot just wait and watch and see because these are the pandemic situation and you will have to take call very fast. So what we, as, as you are mentioning about these the hotels and all, so what we could see, that is a number is 18,000, 20,000 is growing in Kolkata. And we do not have sufficient number of beds because we have limited number of beds. That is a one. Second is all the patients, they don't need to, uh, uh, to reach out to the hospital. They can stay at home, home isolation and all. 
and the mild because majority of the cases which we see 20,000, 25,000 or this India uh, reached to 4 lakhs of cases, there is a, you'll find very negligible percentage of the patient needs hospitalization. Major part, the, so far the COVID behavior is concerned, major portion of the patients can be treated in a, uh, in a, in a uh, uh, home environment. So what, when we could understand this, so we could see that the majority of, but it has also been seen that many of the patients who are getting infected, they can't stay at home because there is not sufficient rooms up there for isolation and there are uh, I mean, uh, aged parents and all. So that is clicked to our mind. And we said, then these are the patients should be ideal for home, uh, home isolation. And if you are not having this, your home care facility, so better to uh, send them to a hotel. Facility. So this gap actually, we could understand this. We did this gap analysis and immediately we uh, wanted to do something how we can fast we can act first to give uh, opportunity to the patients to get admit in one place other than the hospital and also the financial part as well because we'll have to manage the financial because that is an additional uh, financial uh, um, gain that we can get. So immediately we started opening the hotels and we started bringing the corporates. The large number of corporates actually is in our panel right now they have booked their rooms, Tata Steel, ONGC, Reliance, all the big companies, ITC, ICICI, IBM, they have taken all for their employees, taken a couple of, I mean, a few rooms, 10 rooms, 20 rooms, 15 rooms. They are fixing up the room so that if required, they can put their employees in the as a hotel isolation. So we have taken the large hotels. Even we had approached to the government that there is a, uh, you know that Salt Lake Stadium also we had converted to a hospital, semi-hospital. We call it field hospital. So considering the crisis and to overcome this crisis, so what we did, the first phase that we uh, we are talking about the hospital, that's the first is the critical care. Then this is a general bed category. That is a fixed number. You have limitations. You can't increase number. So what we did, Sudden, then we started a 250 bed, that is your Salt Lake Stadium, that we converted to a field hospital. That is for mild to, mid, uh, mild to moderate kind of uh, symptomatic patients. And the hotel, that is a, a symptomatic patients to mild symptomatic. So we have graded. So first is the satellite center, the hotels. Then the second one is can be there in the uh, your uh, stadium. That is the field hospital where there is an oxygen support and all doctors, nurses, all stations that we had made. That's a big one. The, the, your, the youth hostel that your Juba Bharati Kridangal, we converted to a hospital. And that's the big, what, 250 bed. There is a lot of is a nurses and it's an absolutely vibrant kind of a hospital that we have created. And it's in very good occupancy is going on. And this is the third phase from there, from the field hospital. Any patient is getting crash or needs additional support of the health, uh, your uh, ICU or HDU, we are shifting the patient to the hospital. So these are the things you will have to, as a manager, as a leader, you will have to foresee tomorrow, day after tomorrow, what is going to happen. Now, one area opportunity, that is a digital one. This is, that is an innovation because today is an innovation can give you much uh, wider mileage compared to anything. You will have to be very disruptive. So what we did started to, there is a home isolation patient, but they don't have any uh, reach out to the doctors. They are quite helpless. We started home isolation care, virtual home isolation. Almost 200, 250 home isolation patients are we are taking care right now. This is all cost, um, I mean, the, it's, I mean uh, your revenue is coming to this one and equally we are helping out the patient as well. Then there is a, then there is a telemedicine. Telecommunication, telemedicine, which we have expanded a huge. We started telemedicine, we uh, tie up with an uh, IT company and Hyderabad based IT company, and we started this telemedicine. Almost daily, we are doing 100, 150 telemedicine, including your Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, and we have reached out to all, everybody. And that is also, that is a huge revenue is coming because that's a, all consultation and all. And that is also one type of, I'm just giving a man managerial kind of one. This is one is your, uh, you are presently, you are giving service to the patient 
and you maybe to some extent you are generating your revenue but tomorrow when this year will be will overcome the situation this year uh, uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, pandemic then next will be able to this is a networking so we are networking because it is a future business yes yes otherwise yes, yes. one day it right. is going to manage this your pandemic will overcome right right what will happen to the next one this mm -hmm. actually branding you have such a such a such strong networking skills uh, rupak that is that is known that is a really known uh, network this thing but one 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 more thing that is <clears throat> as the ceo of such a huge establishment hmm, now how do you balance your time in the sense that you know so many things must be coming now pandemic is this but you know non pandemic also a situation is there there the certain other things you have got your hr um, incidentally your gmhr was also down with covid and i am also i am perhaps the only part participant here who is covid covid positive and uh, i i take my, my strength and clue from people like you and dr roy and uh, so now how do you balance out your time then another thing that you have done remarkably in amri after that huge fire huge disaster you have built up you have built it up and you are you are back on not only back on track you are ruling the roost as the largest one of the largest hospital chains in this part of the country so uh, professor is also a very interesting question is how i balance my time yes of course we are having now i am having four uh, hospitals now three in kolkata one large set up in bhubaneswar and uh, managing around 1200 beds and at present managing 800 out of the 1200 beds 800 is a covid beds we are managing that's the you know that's the human resource crisis uh, finance is almost there there is lot of challenges that we are facing so majorly i uh, uh, many i mean i distribute my time i uh, share my time this is the first what i did actually and uh, we have created a strong uh, uh, corporate team and uh, we have strengthened this your individual unit so i have decentralized more of the work actually is a central uh, decentralized the work in this unit level all the unit <coughs> are taking care but major part what i see i spend almost 30% time to my hr development because human resource is the major area of concern in healthcare you will have to give lot of time so like all of your institute we uh, we go for tie up we go for manpower how we we'll get, get the manpower man i mean you will have to think not today you will have to as a leader you will have to you will have to see tomorrow day after tomorrow so accordingly i spend 30% of my time for hr i spend almost 30% time for my project as well development these are all my uh, i am uh, bringing this your new projects new uh, satellite center new healthcare center tying up with the government on discussing about how we can manage it so this is a 30 to 35% of my time i am spending to develop this one so i am thinking different way to how further i can do what i can do further so all time you will have to think of 20% yes miscellaneous that is your daily operational stuff great 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 so this Wonderful. way is to my time Uh, uh, Rupak, some uh, there are uh, uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, questions from my students. Uh, this is Linita. Linita, let Oindila read out. Uh, you don't take the pain. Let Oindila read out. Okay, okay, okay. Oindila is here. Okay, okay. Let yes. Oindila read out. We have yes, we have please, please. two COVID um, positive uh, members here. One is uh, Professor Shantanu Rai and the anchor of today, Oindila Mukherjee. Both of them, in spite of their illness, they are here to conduct the show. Great, great, Oindila, please. Oindila. Uh, uh, okay, Shantanu, that you continue reading the questions. In the meantime, she might join. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this is Rinita, Rinita Chatterjee. She says, "Just a minute." Uh, a gist of her. Just of our question is, 
that uh, uh, citizens about getting uh, to create an awareness among citizens to get vaccinated and um, experts expect the third wave now now what should be done to uh, to make up for the for the mistakes done in the past and and counteract the same that means what she wants to say is i would also like to add that we watch countless uh, image countries across the world etc trying to no what she wants to the gist of what our, our question i could make out is that uh, what shall we do how are we preparing for a third wave which a uh, possible third wave which might hit us rupak this is from prinita so, chatterjee our bbs student of hospital management so your uh, major question is the vaccination drive actually yes what is happening see since this your first pandemic started we are all talking about the vaccine because that is the only hope that uh, there is a lot of research was going on and we are expecting when this vaccine will uh, will be able to start this vaccination program now from january uh, 16 Uh, we started the vaccination program uh, that's a two vaccine is available in uh, india you all know the covaxin and the covishield and there is a third one is going to introduce in couple of days time already two days started actually in kolkata this is a couple of days time we will take that's a sputnik v by redis laboratories so that is a whole um, a vaccine part but what happened actually the first phase started uh, uh, i mean um, january Uh, 16 that is related to exclusively for uh, healthcare workers second phase second phase actually for the uh, frontliners police for the kolkata corporation people and all those things i mean the uh, and uh, then started is your 45 to 60 comorbid with comorbid then uh, no comorbid and now the third phase we are talking about 18 to 44 years so 18 onwards actually all will be will go for uh vaccination drive now uh this vaccination program actually what happened there is a i don't want to um, uh, in, um, go into any kind of uh, controversy or whatever happened and all there but there is a there is a uh, huge shortage at present now because the production is not there the way there is a demand 130 crore population or 135 crore population to drive and uh, if we are not giving 50% of the 50% of the population is not being vaccinated then you will not uh, reach to a hard immunity so to to as you are more concerned about the third surge so that is the only way that we can uh, yes uh, we can we can protect ourselves that is the vaccine vaccine is a major way now you uh, you must be aware about because there is a lot of discussion happening in the media there is a how this your uh, they are expediting this your vaccination uh, man, uh, their vaccination production see vaccination vaccine is a biological product it, this is there are a lot of uh, protocol, uh, protocols and all one has to follow there is a quality uh, control inside quality control then it will go to the uh, i mean cdci for more of the, the external control so uh, we are expecting that <laughs> as per the government notification maybe from july onwards will get uh, will get start lot of vaccine there is a, they have government has also allowed us the import of the vaccine of the pfizer moderna but that is also not they have not uh, i mean uh, uh, given approval as uh, as yet so uh, third surge to protect is yes, of course the vaccine which we are expecting from july onwards many people will start getting vaccine uh, uh, this uh, may this now we are passing through a very hard time so for the vaccine is concerned but definitely it's we will get uh, a better kind of a response from uh, second week of june and but the major part that we can only protect ourselves that still we will have to continue with this your mask and uh, sanitizing our uh, hand washing and your um, uh, mixing of people that is uh, self uh, social distancing all those things we'll have to follow so that is the one part is the vaccine part yes of course now 18 plus is very important segment the students category and the working class they are going out each and every day now definitely how long the students will be uh, online classes and all will continue so they will have to start their classes on offline classes so vaccine is very important the government is taking care we are expecting from july onwards yes of course the situation will be little better hard wave wall we are talking about maybe october 
September, October because the scientists, they are predicting. But still, the, the, we are not very sure when the SARS will be coming. But before that, we should go for vaccination as early as possible, as much as possible. Thank I you. I think Oindila is here. Oindila? Hi, yes, Oindila. Yes, yes. yes, Oindila will read down the next question. Hi, Oindila. Hello. Yes. Hi. <laughs> good evening. Welcome it's to the show, to Oindila. You. Yes. Uh, please, please read uh, yes, out the uh, next question. I will carry on from here. Well, uh, the next question is, in fact, a very relevant from, uh, one from Upasana Kundu. Uh, what strategies would work irrespective of socio socioeconomic differences to empower people to be responsible for their health? And is there a scale that can be used in emergency departments to detect level of severity in elderly people? See, uh, there is no, uh, uh, I mean, no scale actually is there to, to understand the severity that is not there at present. Yes, there is a lot of innovation is going on, a lot of research is going on in terms of your COVID situation. There is a lot of companies actually directly now uh, uh, working on the different, different segments. And uh, we are expecting that, yes, of course, many of the um, innovation will take place. There are a huge number of startups actually started working on this COVID in many ways. And uh, in um, shortly, maybe we'll be able to get a lot of uh, uh, new ideas. Uh, I mean, in terms of your uh, understanding COVID, testing of COVID and uh, your severity to uh, assess. Those are the things is on the pipeline that is uh, we are going to get it. And to differentiate this is a socioeconomic, yes, of course, that as I told, the discussed earlier also. See, if this is our uh, primary healthcare, secondary healthcare, we'll have to stand in more. And so that this, uh, these, are the, these are the people actually, the downtrodden people, the poor people can get advantage of the healthcare because there is a there is a huge gap in terms of your uh, getting uh, better healthcare access. I mean, accessibility and the affordability is a big issue. And we'll have to strengthen the insurance companies as well. As of now, yes, of course, there is a 13.8% of the uh, CHER growth is there in the insurance premium, but more insurance uh, will have, uh, we'll have to introduce. There are a couple of uh, government initiatives there is a Swasto Shati, a lot of government projects are there. And that is also one is a Pradhan Manchi Jojana, that is you call it the Ayushman Bharat. These are all for this downtrodden socioeconomic kind of people. They're, these are there. Government is also trying as much as possible. We'll have to create more of the hospitals in the secondary, uh, uh, secondary category so that all investment should not take place in the tertiary category primary and the secondary will have to stand in. Then only will be make uh, this healthcare affordable and, uh, and, uh, and uh, more uh, people will be able to get access to the modern healthcare. Upasana, let me add, Rupak Badwa is a, one of the fittest persons uh, who is a friend of mine. Fit, fit as a fiddle actually. And uh, with due humility, may I state that uh, at 70 plus, I am still, I still do my workouts at home and you can see an evidence of this here. Here is my punching bag uh, as a part of my workout. And I've crossed 70 and I'm, I'm apart from my university, as you, as you know, I'm sitting in the board of seven listed companies and I drive my own car also. Now, it, uh, fitness is, uh, I think, in the mind, basically in the mind. Do I'm a COPD patient? I think it's in the mind, Upasana. You have to think fit. Otherwise, at 71 plus, I would never have thought I'm fit. My, my, most of my friends are retired and are golfing or are, or are uh, sitting and uh, drinking beer at the Tolligans Club. But here, I'm talking of my Tata Steel friends. But I'm still doing what is allowing me. But I must have my morning workout. And uh, this, this is the room where I have my workout. I have a small treadmill here. I have a punching bag. And I've, 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 I've my workout, it's a small gym I've got in this room. Uh, so this is how I keep fit. And Rupak, of course, is the, is the last word of fitness. And, and so is our chancellor. In fact, Shottam, uh, your, your good friend Rupak, he's, 
he has to he has to go to the gym every day he has to go to the gym every day yes oindrila i wanted to so, add this so I, 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 i would ask a question i add to this your professor roy's part that is you will have to feed both mentally and physically yes what talking about physical fitness is very important but mental fitness is also very important to stay yes. it as a whole i mean definitely definitely yes. and we should definitely, learn definitely. Uh, something we should learn from professor Achha, i want Ray, to i want to ask a question yes. can i ask yes absolutely yes can i yes, can i can i definitely yes what yes, about absolutely. the health insurance sector mr burua during the pandemic the liability of the health insurance sector has increased like anything mm -hmm. yes tell me yeah yeah during the pandemic the liability of the health insurance companies yes has increased like anything uh -huh. is it true yes of and course how they are coping with and uh, are you facing any problem in that area see uh, health insurance is a big uh, area if you were talking about how how this your uh, uh, this healthcare private and healthcare if you see uh, we are discussing about uh, healthcare uh, indian healthcare how it has um, uh, reached to a very uh, lucrative uh, segment it, it has become the uh, one of the fastest growing organization on this industry good business yes uh, good business been is the fastest growing industry we mm. can say it has only happened uh, when in 2000 there is a uh, due to this your deregulations of the insurance sector earlier we used to have only this mediclaim and all there is a gipsa there is a all the um, mediclaim policy of the oriental insurance national insurance and all after 2000 there is a uh, i mean your parliament they have passed through this your deregulate the uh, insurance sector and they have formed the irda insurance regulatory development authority and they have allowed the private healthcare to get into this your insurance and it has started growing actually from uh, uh, now it is this your insurance sector is almost is a 13.17% your uh, i mean um, uh, chgr see is the last your in the in the year 2000 uh, 2019 the uh, the recovery of your the premium actually it has reached to your 7.39 billion when is 51.637 crore actually the premium collection and that is the big segment is the insurance i mentioned earlier also that health insurance is very important part and parcel of each and every one now during this covid situation what happened insurance sector they had started this your covid coverage and all and uh, they have given lot of support to the common people they have been to so that they can get benefit out of this uh, financial support uh, out of this your insurance so that happened but and but this year they are little bit a uh, restricted way they are uh, they are moving now they are not allowing each and every uh, policy holder to go for uh, home isolation or the this your satellite center and all so they have started restricting uh, the, uh, the the expenditure pattern so and uh, uh, and uh, this uh, this they have they are trying to make in other states they have done this is a restricting this your covid price covid package they had introduced so so many things they are doing but yes of course this uh, insurance sector is a uh, the last year during this pandemic they had given a lot of support to the common people but again that is a maturity uh, is a very quite high, I mean, a high in terms of premium collection and the expenditure to the insurance that was very high but that is uh, insurance issue insurance problem but this is a big support given to the common people insurance sector and it during, is during the well. first phase yeah going and in the second phase also thank you in phase also insurance sector yes, yes, yes. lot of support that's no lot of support yeah yeah yes. i understand yes. thank you thank Andira. you professor kashnobish yes i'll carry on mm. uh, well uh, ognimitra choudhury another question ognimitra choudhury uh, how can we control the black marketing of beds oxygen cylinders remdesivir and other very various other healthcare products very uh, you know Uh, uh definitely a concern at, as uh, you've heard uh, several of the cases where it is quite severe with uh, black marketing so how so uh, so it's very unfortunate kind of a situation this time particularly we could see 
uh, in the first phase, uh, first surge, actually, we had not faced this kind of a situation. The uh, What we see, pan-India disease, it's not the problem of Kolkata, this is happening everywhere. There are some reasons also, you find that is a, because that's a demand supply gap. There is a major demand actually happened in uh, the uh, medicine that you are talking about remdesivir, and there is a demand of the oxygen. Every day we are talking about there is a shortage of oxygen. There is a, a lot of patient died in Delhi that there is no oxygen, and the black market. The black marketing is it usually starts when there is a huge demand and supply gap, and some of the uh, um, I mean, uh, webinar uh, actually, they start to they try to take the advantage <laughs> of the situation. That is the government part. The government will have to take action. Government will have to uh, the strict vigilance has to be there to stop this kind of in uh, uh, this type of a uh, I mean your uh, uh, activity which is taking place. Remdesivir, why it happened? Because remdesivir is a, is a, a drug which is uh, you know the very short expiry. Uh, earlier it was three three months, and, the, and the, now it is giving a six months. Once this your uh, uh, this COVID started declining the number in the month of December and all January, there is a huge stock of remdesivir. So all the companies like Adila, Cipla, they have they thought of that. that I mean, uh, there is a uh, down of this your COVID cases. So we should stop uh, remdesivir production because there is no uh, uh, fun of um, I mean producing remdesivir. Without when there is a no pay, no case because remdesivir is being used particularly for the COVID cases. Now, uh, once this I, that I mentioned earlier also, this second surge actually happened overnight in the lab and at the end of March, April, May. Suddenly, it started in a, when it reached to the almost to the peak level. Remdesivir is a huge demand started and mm -hmm. uh, there is no production because company had stopped producing this uh, remdesivir now. The government has given order to start production of this your MDCV. That's all production started, and uh, we are expecting already. It is little bit, uh, you know, the supply has started coming in the market, and we are we have also started getting. I think in seven ten days time you will find that the MDCV is plenty available, and there is a no black marketing on those, those that opportunity for the uh, I mean uh, the businessman will go, and this will be happen. So far, oxygen is concerned. Is of course this second surge actually consuming huge amount of oxygen. Oxygen. Uh, I mean, more of the patients also getting affected. More of the patients actually in the uh, in the uh, home isolation. They are procuring lot of uh, you know cylinder oxygen. Oxygen is two part. One is the LMO liquid medical oxygen, and one is the cylinder oxygen. Particularly the large hospitals. We are all, uh, we have a uh, plant actually for LMO, liquid medical oxygen. And, but the, there is a no shortage. LMO, there is no shortage. But the sh uh, uh, shortage is particularly in the uh, cylinder. There is a huge demand. Again, demand and supply. Some uh, uh, businessmen, they have started taking the opportunity, the I mean, uh, advantage of the situation. They are selling it at a very high price. So I think uh, this is government will have to take action immediately. More vigilance has to be there. The police control everything and the stern action has to be taken by the government so that nobody should take uh, this COVID situation as granted and uh, for the business purpose that uh, one has to do. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, there are actually lots of questions pouring in. Do, uh, do we have time, Professor uh, Ray, to take in questions? But I, I, yeah, I, think, I, I think we I, have I can... two more. Rupa, one, one, there's one question by Moyushri. Moyushri, uh, Moyushri, our BBS student, there's one question uh, by Moyushri. After this, Ognimitra, I think there is Moyushri. Uh, Ornith has already put a question. It's, yes. So, uh, on it is question. on it yes. or on its question. I'll just ask uh, Moishri's question. Huh? Moishri Moishri. 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 I, I'll ask Moishri's question. Moishri's Moishri. uh, if someone is infected with COVID and uh, has, uh, you know, as uh, was infected and now no more, hasn't got cured, how many months should he or she uh, be uh, uh, not, uh, you know, have that? period where, you know, you can uh, get again? What is the gap period where you can? Uh, it's uh, you should you wouldn't be getting the virus again, infected again. Hello, uh, uh, Mr. Barua. 
see there are a uh, lot of uh, mixed ideas actually uh, i mean coding in different uh, uh, medical journal uh, i mean um, <clears throat> submitting different kind of an opinion but usually uh, people talk about that uh, once you are infected almost 6 uh, uh, to 8 months actually you are protected your antibody there in your body to protect you for maybe for 6 to 8 months but again there are uh, this is there are exceptions are there there are many uh, pa patients getting infected within this your 6 to 8 months also so how you can protect yourself whether you you had covid or the vaccine and all you will have to protect yourself once you are uh, covid um, uh, you have recovered from the covid or you have uh, uh, i mean uh, given vaccine you will have to protect yourself continuously by putting mask and uh, hand washing and you will have to avoid the crowd um, this that is the three areas actually then you will be able to protect so still you know that's a covid is one year old baby actually we have started understanding covid last uh, uh, february march so enough document enough research uh, not happened so far still every day we are learning every day there is a lot of research is going on and uh, every day we new new uh, theory is coming but still before all those things we'll have to protect ourselves by putting mask hand washing and we avoid crowd that is the only way we'll be able to because uh, i mean protect uh, ourselves we can protect ourselves we can protect others as well oindila uh, just a moment uh, i have a question for mr borua if you can uh, help me to understand uh, a person who has recovered from <coughs> covid what is the uh, time gap that he should give he or she should give before taking the vaccine first dose or second dose whatever initially it was uh, uh, one and a half months two months now yesterday there is a uh, notification that they are saying 6 months after the after the you have infected so infection taken place one one day so earlier it was out of the when you have recovered from there you can manage is in 6 uh, to 4 uh, uh, to 6 weeks but now the recent uh, this your notification we have received yesterday from the central government uh, health, uh, health ministry they are talking about 6 uh, months so before that you should not go for once you uh, recovered from covid the, the the reason for that you have antibody within you so unnecessarily you should not disturb your body giving further antibody producing antibody uh, through vaccine so let it be little bit uh, fed out there's your uh, vaccine uh, your antibody and then again you push external antibody so that you can be fit. that is maybe but, but mr borua on a layman's uh, point of view there are various different types of strains coming in so yes. the strain that he had earlier um, might be different from the you are going things right in that way so better to uh, get vaccinated i think between 2 to 3 months time better right. to get vaccinated in right. maybe 2 months time it better to get vaccinated so there are a lot of research is going on but safe side you will have to keep yourself safe side so two months after two months you can go for vaccination okay thank you sir yes indira uh yes mr arup dash uh, we have a question from him uh, which covid vaccines have been developed in india uh, and uh, which is the most effective see This is, is a very. Not a this is not a question. This is this. Everybody, anybody who reads the newspaper, who who is this? Is this our student? What is who is who is given this question? Which COVID vaccine has been developed in India? What are you talking? I don't you read newspapers. Both that, yes. COVID Shield and Covaxin. COVID Shield is from the Serum Institutes of Pune, uh, which is Punawala, other Punawala, and the Covaxin is by the um, that uh, other uh, by what is the. Uh, Access Zeneca or something, That's and then the third one, which which Rupak was mentioning, is that the Sputnik V, which is coming uh, uh, from Russia. Russian one, Sputnik V is the Russian. Then there are several others. Vaccines are also on the uh, uh, on the on the line on the line. I mean, one is from Zydus Cadilla with the, all the doses. Yes, everything. Please, please go to Google. Please go to Google and find out. This this is not a question for 
uh, for uh, our and if you are a student i would like to tell you that uh, you should do your homework properly and you should know what questions to ask okay we have uh, another question from ritoban mojumdar hmm. uh uh he's saying that uh, uh Uh, auditing the usage of oxygen efficiently and by providing lesser levels of oxygen to critical covid patients to raise their oxygen saturation level to barely 90 or uh, uh, 90 or lower uh, the medical personnel say that this actually helps the patients more than if their oxygen saturation was raised to a uh, 98 to 99 is this true so this is uh, true or false that i uh, i'm not very sure but one thing uh, i don't know what exactly he is asking but i can say one thing that is your oxygen consumption i think maybe he is asking about the whether there is an what is the percentage of oxygen is required to maintain the saturation of 98 and uh, what we see sometimes you know that is a your uh, the the wastage of sometimes happened oxygen is a required is maybe 6 liter but maybe we are giving 10 liters if you can see that with the 6 liter of oxygen you can, you are reaching to 98% of saturation then what is the need of giving this your 10 liter of oxygen because oxygen is a very crisis and is a very scarce uh, um, uh, commodity right now so the doctors and the nurses actually uh, uh, doing uh, are there in the ward managing the patient they will have to be a little bit more careful and uh, see that the oxygen oxygen level uh, used by external uh, de uh, your devices and the uh, intake by the patient whether it is matching or not so that the optimum uh, saturation the patient can maintain and with a proper kind of a supply of oxygen so maybe that is the one part that each and every uh, healthcare professionals should look into in some some cases it has been observed also that there is a lot of wastage is happening uh, but again um, it depends on the healthcare how they are managing how monitor they are monitoring the uh, uh, oxygen level how they are monitoring the yes. uh, <clears throat> supply all those things is a very it's a very elaborate yes uh, the, uh, uh, thank you thank you agnimit so one of my students has prompted me the other va vaccine man manufacturer whom my name was not coming to me is bharat biotech which bharat makes this covaxin bharat biotech thank bharat bharat you thank you agni thank you agni mitra our students are smart chalo then anything else that's, any anything I think else that's, uh, that is no 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 that is the uh, i think those were the last set of questions uh, rupak can't can't thank you enough really can't thank you enough rupak this is too much fantastic my pleasure you took so much of time you could took, and you are still in the office god knows when you will go home and god mr knows when you has been very patiently in spite of that mr. this is fitness this is fitness this is this is ina this is ina i think i think mental and physical fitness yes yes this is the combination of mental and physical fitness thank you very very much this i understand but answering to the question but the formal vote of thanks to be delivered by your head is he here yes he is here so would you please ask him to dr debraj auto our uh, head of the department would uh, give the formal vote of thanks uh, thank you uh, thank you mr mr borua and dr roy our students have learned a lot of things uh, we have also learned a lot of things uh, time management and as you are talking about how to go for multitasking resilience how to involve your workforce so we have learned a lot of things and obviously you must thank uh, professor shantanu roy uh, sir you are a source of inspiration as you mentioned that we always look forward to you the kind of zeal both in terms of physical and emotional we are you always you are there i also must thank uh, dr ratan khashnamesh and also uh, honorable vice chancellor sir for uh, for having given such a wonderful opening remarks which actually has set the context of the whole discussion i must also thank uh, madam mina bose and uh, madam anjula mukherjee to have uh, created such a nice platform and also mr himadri ghosh uh, to have given such a great it support and we are really really uh, thankful to all of you and at the last i must thank all the people who have attended this session 
especially uh, students. I can also tell some of my colleagues. Uh, it's really wonderful. This is uh, evening uh, and uh, it's an off day. It's a, it's a holiday, but still, so many students have uh, have joined this session. They have asked some very good questions, and I'm really feeling very proud uh, because of my students. So this is from my end, and over to you, uh, Madam Vanjula Mukherjee. Uh, Mr. Bodua, uh, once the uh, pandemic is over, which we hope to be uh, to happen very soon, uh, this is an advance invitation to you to please come and visit our university. Right now, you, the you students don't worry. are not coming, but you don't uh, once... worry. I'll drag him. I'll drag him. Don't worry. Don't we worry. Have a, yeah. We have a lovely department of uh, school of nursing, where we have a huge number of students. So they would definitely. Uh, enough, want enough to for your information. To you. We are already negotiating with them, and uh, and our registrar and I. We have visited. We have. Uh, we have written to them and it is under in an advanced stage of negotiation, very a collaborative uh, venture between SNU and AMRI. The, the proposal uh, registrar uh, and I, we had visited and we had sent the proposal. Uh, we are not only nursing, we are going for a wide range uh, collaboration uh, on, in the health area with uh, uh, AMRI hospitals. That's, that's, uh, uh, that's being contemplated. You'll be very glad. Everybody would be very wonderful glad. Wonderful news. Wonderful Absolutely. news. Now there's a ray of hope. Is it your definitely one day? Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Professor Kashnubish. Uh, can we uh, close the session now? Yes. Okay. Thank very you very much. Heart. You for giving me an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Bodua. Really, really, really fantastic group of thank you so much. I don't have words to thank you. No, no. My pleasure. Yes. Oh, my thank, you. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. And take care. And I should say everybody should stay safe and well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you, thank, you, thank you, Indila and Shantanuda, thank in spite you. of your... Um, limited uh, energy Moment. levels, but I don't find any limitation. Of course, both of you are quite <laughs> energetic. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just